Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. And yesterday was the 108th running of the Indianapolis 500. The 2024 Indy 500 was yet another fantastic race. I immensely enjoyed this one, especially the finish really had me on the edge of my seat. I would not hesitate at all in saying this was a much more exciting race than the Monaco Grand Prix, even if we had to wait for it because of the rain delay, which is mildly annoying, but not world ending. And we got the full show, so it doesn't really matter in the end. It was just a fantastic race. A bit of a messy one. We had quite a few yellows in this one. Early on, we lost former winner Marcus Ericsson. He got taken up by Tom Blomqvist and Pietro Fittipaldi got caught up in that one as well. And then we lost Marcus Armstrong to a Honda engine, which was an issue that kept coming up during the race. We lost Catherine Legg to the same thing and Felix Rosenquist as well. For the people with surnames ending in Kvist, this was not a good race. Not only did Tom Blomqvist go out on lap one, but Linus Lundqvist went out on lap 28 and Felix Rosenquist on lap 56 with another Honda engine blown. So three Honda engines gone in the first 56 laps, first quarter of the race, and it was kind of a worry that there would be more as the race went on, but actually that was the final one. We had a few other spinners, Colton Herter had a spin, Ryan hunter Ray broke his steering, Marco Andretti had a crash. Biggest of all, I think Will Power had a crash. Penske really looked on top form here. The race maybe didn't pan out as it could have done for them, but it did come up trumps in the end. But Will Power, he crashed out of this one. That really dents his title hopes as much as anything. And he still only won one Indy 500, as has Scott Dixon. Um, throughout this race, Penske, as I said, were in top form. The early part of this race, especially, they led the majority of it, I believe. I think Scott McLaughlin led for the majority of laps. Great performance from him as well. And another one who really, really impressed this was Santino Ferrucci. He was running up in the higher places towards the first half of the race, although he did eventually drop back. Um, this was fantastic. As it going to the last 30 laps especially, it was brilliant watching Rossi and New Garden fight and then Pato Award close and then the final lap between Pato Award and New Garden. It was either way, it could have gone either way, I mean. And Joseph New Garden winning two in a row is a very special achievement, especially for someone who took so long to win it the first time. He's the first person to win two in a row since Helio Castro Neves 22 years ago. And I honestly don't think this will be the last one he wins. He is just... He is an incredible driver. He hasn't had the luck in the championship of late, but he is a really brilliant driver. Especially on ovals, he really seems to excel at the moment. Uh, Pato Award would finish second, and it came very close to Aaron McLaren taking their first Indy 500, but it was just not to be. The second time Pato Award has finished second at the Indy 500, and it's only been a couple of years since the last time. Penske, though, 20 wins at the Indy 500, way more than anyone else. It really is a special place for them. And honestly, that number's going to be hot. I don't think anyone will ever catch Penske in terms of overall wins. But that number's just going to keep getting bigger over the years to come, I think. It pushed the race very, very late. So Carl Larson was meant to do both this and the Coca-Cola 600. And that would have been an immense, immense effort if he could have done both. The rain delay meant that he wasn't going to do the start of the NASCAR race. And they had a substitute ready for that. So he raced in the IndyCar race. He did okay. He got to the end of the race. He qualified extremely well. And really, it was just a... An issue with the procedural parts of IndyCar, the restarts, the pit stops, things like that, that really held him back. He finished the race on the lead lap. He was only down in 18th. It was not a bad drive from him. He was second of the rookies as well. Christian Rasmussen was the first rookie in 12th. But yeah, Carl Larson, honestly, if he moved across to IndyCar, I'd be interested in seeing what he can do. I think he would be able to give a much better showing than even Jimmy Johnson. Scott Dixon got yet another podium at the Indy 500 and again he was another one who could have won it. Alex Palau was up there in fifth but never really featured right at the front. Scott McLaughlin did well but only came up sixth in the end. Just Connor Daly got another top ten. 
Um, there wasn't many others who like really stood out as brilliant. There were a lot of different race leaders in this one as well. A massive list of race leaders, which is fantastic to see. Alex Palau still leads for championship, but Scott Dixon is not far behind. Will Power has dropped back a little bit. Pato O'Ward and Colton Herter are there and thereabouts, as well as Scott McLaughlin and Joseph Newgard and Alexander Rossi as well. It's a shame Felix Rosenquist couldn't have had a better race because good points here would have kept him in title contention. As it is, he's dropping back a bit. And that's a shame because he has shown so much pace at the start of this year. Anyway, next up we have Detroit this weekend. So we haven't even got a long break. We have the Indy 500 and then another race the week after. So they don't get much chance to rest. And the championship is very wide open. I think between the Chip Ganassis and the Penske's and Pato Award, maybe Colton Herta if he gets some more good results. He needs a win, really. It's been a while since Colton Herta won a race. It's exciting stuff. Indy 500 was incredible. The IndyCar Championship's incredible. It's very exciting this year. It's honestly one of the series I most look forward to watching is IndyCar these days, which is a great thing for them because obviously my viewership is a massive deal. But also, I think, to a general fan, I think IndyCar worldwide, I know they say the Indy 500 is the biggest race of the year. I would maybe say one of the biggest I think between that and Le Mans how many years of history is it it started in 1911 and they've only missed a handful because of wars it's a pretty special race and this lived up to the hype I can't wait until next year I honestly can't I love the Indy 500 so much and I love IndyCar at the moment it's been absolutely brilliant for the last few years this championship is really heating up nicely so let me know your thoughts in the comments below did you enjoy the Indy 500 Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And most importantly of all, have a good one.